Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to Nowy's Dive Team Report. I'm your host, Greg Martin. I have to tell you that uh, as, a, as a diving instructor, when I start talking with my students about things that they're going to witness firsthand here in the Pacific Northwest, or, or really any other place, but uh, mainly because here in the Pacific Northwest, we have one of the big ones. Uh, I, I always start talking about octopus, and I, I love the experience of playing with the giant Pacific octopus, especially the ones that we have up here. And I ran across a book here about a year ago or so, and I saw it at my, my local bookstore, and I just immediately picked it up. I didn't know anything about it and got home and started reading it. And I was done like that evening. It was just a fantastic read. And I have recommended this book to more people. Uh, in fact, every class that I do with the students, I recommend they go out and pick up a copy of The Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery. And uh, I asked uh, Cy if she would join us and, and talk a little bit about that book and her experiences. And she's on the phone with us. Cy, thanks for the time. I am thrilled to be on. God, thank you so much. Oh, love to have you. Talk a little bit about the book. I mean, I, I've read the book. I, I, I know it inside and out, and probably I'm going to sit down and read it again this afternoon if I can find my copy, uh, if I haven't loaned it to somebody else. But where did this book come from? Well, it started when I first met someone named Athena. And she was the giant Pacific octopus living at the time at the New England Aquarium in Boston. And I'd always wanted to meet an octopus. So I contacted the aquarium and generously behind the scenes, they opened the lid to her tank and she came floating up to the top and I could see her dominant eye fix on my face. And her arms started boiling up out of the freezing cold water. So I instantly plunged my arms in to meet hers. And soon she was covering the skin of my hands and arms with her soft, white, questing suckers. And she was changing color with emotion, and I probably was too. It was such an amazing meeting to kind of have a meeting of the minds across this, this chasm of half a billion years of evolution, you know, me, a terrestrial vertebrate, meeting this intelligent marine invertebrate who's able to do all these things that we humans can't do, taste with their skin, change color and shape, pour their bodies through impossibly small openings. And as different as we are, I could see that we were having similar experience. We we're both so curious about the other, and we both reached out to the other. And this was something that transformed my life in that instant and set me on this octopus odyssey that lasted during the three years I was researching the book and continues to this day. And it's it's such a fantastic story to sit and read about not just Athena, but all the others that, that have come since then, because octopus obviously don't have the longest of lifespans. But I mean, this is this is like a story. I, I, I want to say, Sai, this is kind of like a boy and, and her dog kind of story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, a boy and her dog, but you, you, you get what I mean here. <laughs> Yes, exactly. I mean, it's it's a sh it's a story of friendship across species, and the fact that you know that the the species were so disparate in this case is what makes this story a little different. I mean, it's it's almost like the story told in E.T. You know, because if if you were going to find a creature more different than a human than an octopus. You'd have to go to outer space or science fiction. But you can still be friends with someone like that. And it's not just me making this up. As you know, there have been all kinds of lab experiments done to show that octopuses do indeed recognize individual humans just by sight alone, even when those humans are dressed identically. And this has been conclusively proven. And people who live with octopuses, those who care for octopuses in aquaria, they know 
that each has a different personality, that sometimes they're quirky, sometimes they're bold, sometimes they're shy. And this gets reflected in the names the animals get. Not every fish in a public aquarium has a name, but you can bet that the Aquarius have names for all the octopuses, and they often reflect their personalities. They're such an interesting creature, and I know any of you that are divers out there that have had the opportunity of, of following an octopus around, perhaps on a coral reef in warm water or up here in the Pacific Northwest, they're reclusive. They, they don't like to be out and about, you know, running about as, as we divers, you know, chase after them and that kind of thing. But if, if you do know and you take the patience and the time, uh, you can be rewarded by, uh, you know, a very friendly um, experience. And that experience, you've done such a wonderful job in the book of, of showing that experience, not, not over just, you know, with Athena, as you, as you talk about in the beginning, but over a number of different octopus and the different personalities and so forth. Uh, I would love a, a Soul of the Octopus Part 2, Sai. Oh, geez. Well, I would love to experience a Part 2, let me tell you. Well, who knows? Maybe there'll be the movie and then the theme park. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sending you five bucks right now. That's my part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's so cool to be talking to someone who's actually, you know, had the same experience in the wild. I mean, I, I haven't had the experience with the wild giant Pacific, but I have had the experience with um, the Pacific Day octopus off Morea in French Polynesia of someone who is curious and reaches out her arm to touch and taste you. A wild animal doing that. I mean, this was one of the things that dazzled me about becoming a diver. And as you know from the book, it's the octopuses that enticed me and inspired me to become a diver well into my 50s. And it just opened this whole incredible world to me. Nowhere else in the world except undersea can you be so close to so many different species of wild animals within inches of your face. I mean, that just blew me away. But not that many animals are as curious about us as octopuses are. And they sometimes do these f just funny, hilarious things. They sometimes do very sweet things. I've, I've heard of people who, um, this was an uh, octopus tetricus, I think, in um, Octopolis, a dive site in Australia. An octopus reached out to this diver and literally led him around by the hand, showing him around... Mm -hmm the octopus's lair and the general area. I mean, that is, that is amazing. And they'll do this. They're curious about you. Um, they, they watch you just like a person would watch you. The photographer, Ellen Bogan, who took photos for a book I did for kids called The Octopus Scientist when we were in Morea, had never in all his years of diving, and he's been diving since a teenager and he's now in his mid-40s, he had never had any sea creature watch him with the evident interest that a Pacific Day octopus watched him when he was photographing another octopus. And the first octopus actually tried to get a better vantage point from which it could watch Keith photograph this other octopus. And you can see this in the photo that Keith took. He's standing up on something tall, like, you know, a kid trying to see over a fence to watch a baseball game or something. Sure, sure. It's the most amazing thing. And I, I'm sure you've had experiences like this yourself. As you mentioned, they're an alien creature. If if there are such things as alien creatures, the, the octopus is, is the creature. Now, the book came out, what, a year, year and a half ago? Uh, let's see, May of 2015. 15. So, yeah, that's uh, it's just about two two years ago or will be soon. The, the book, as I mentioned, uh, if you can't find a copy of it, you know, go to your local uh, bookstore and ask them to order a copy of uh, The Soul of an Octopus. Again, it is just a fantastic uh, read. Has has won the, the National Book Award, is, or uh, it was one of the finalists, I understand? Yeah, it was a finalist, which was amazing and thrilling to me that you know, a natural history book would get that, that kind of attention. So I was 
absolutely delighted. One of my heroines, Diane Ackerman, was, it turned out she was one of the judges for that. And to have been picked as a finalist by somebody whose work I've been following for over 30 years was just so rewarding. You know, I don't want to slight the other works. Uh, you're probably best known for uh, The Good Good Pig. I don't read books about pigs personally. Uh, you know. <laughs> Maybe the sea pig. Uh, yeah, the sea pig. I don't know. Uh, my family <laughs> raised <laughs> my family raised uh, pigs as uh, when I was a kid. So uh, you know, I'm not that interested in pigs. But uh, um, you know, and you you you're not just the uh, the soul of an octopus writer. You you have quite a number of other accomplishments to your name, and that's that's wonderful. And to add, now a diver as well. You you just became a diver a few years ago, right? Yes, I did it for this book. And boy, I tell you, um, there's a there's a chapter in there about learning to to dive, learning to breathe underwater. <laughs> Such a foreign concept, and it's I think it's harder to do. It. It's, it's anything when you're when you're a little older. And um, in in my dive class, um, I, I kind of washed out. My ears started to shriek even in the MIT swimming pool Mm. because I was surfacing too fast. What was funny was, I I think my problem was, um, water was, um, was leaking into my airway and the reason was that I was smiling too much. (laughs) (laughs) My lips were too loose because even underwater in the swimming pool, it was such a riot to to be throwing things back and, and forth with other new divers and learning to see through your mask and learning to trust that yes, you can take a breath when you're underwater. Yes. And, and it was just so fun. But when my ears began to scream on the second day, I, I had to drop out of that class because of course they, they don't want you to get an injury. But I wanted to do it so much, I persisted and I, I um, actually found a place in New Hampshire, much closer to our house, where I got private lessons from a wonderful diver who was older than I was and had made every mistake in the world. She was wonderful and shared with you, like, okay, you messed that up. Well, so did I. And look at me now. <laughs> so um, it just opened, it literally opened the world to me because the world is the blue planet. I mean, our planet is not only mostly covered with water. Seventy percent of the surface area is ocean, but ninety-five percent of the habitable space on the planet is water, and I was missing out on ninety-five percent of the Earth until I became a diver. So one of the things I hope the book does is encourage people to be divers and encourage people, even if they're not going to be divers, to really cherish and protect the ocean at this time that it and all of its creatures are under such assault. Bingo, bingo, bingo. And I agree 100% with, you know, just what you said. And, and again, uh, go get, go get a copy of the book and you know, read it, uh, love it, cherish it, uh, pass it around. And, and I, I mentioned to, to you that I need to go read mine again, if I can find it. I think I've loaned it again. Um, <laughs> and I don't remember. So maybe I'll just go buy another copy. You never know. <laughs> I, I do appreciate your time. I, I know you've got to run. And uh, again, buy a copy of the book. You want to learn about our blue planet and the creatures in it and not just ourselves. Uh, pick up a copy of The Soul of an Octopus. And Cy, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Greg, it was a pure pleasure. Always love to uh, talk to folks about uh, my underwater world and yours, too. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of the Naui Dive Team Report. Thanks again to Cy Montgomery for talking with us about her book, The Soul of an Octopus. Go get a copy right now. (laughs) And I will talk to you again next time. Until then, I'll see you underwater. Underwater.